I'm not doing this video in Celsius because America. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to give a very basic explanation about what cones are and what the cone chart is and how they correlate to different temperatures and how they relate to your ceramic artwork. For anyone who's new to pottery or doesn't know, a cone is essentially a measurement of heat. So when somebody says cone 6, cone 5, cone 4, what they're talking about is a very specific measurement of heat. And the reason we call them cones is because they're shaped just like this. They're shaped in a little tiny cone. First, let's go over the cone chart. This here is the Orton cone chart, and it starts all the way at your top left at cone 022, and that's about the lowest cone we can get for melting things. The most basic Orton cone chart goes all the way down to cone 14. Keep in mind that there's a lot of things in our society that need to be fired at a higher fire than cone 10. For example, there are certain brakes for cars that are ceramic, and those need to be fired. Little parts in your car, such as your spark plug, have ceramic in them, and they need to be fired. Some prosthetic legs are part ceramic and they need to be higher fired. But I think the one that we take for granted the most is most likely toilets. Toilets are fired to like 2,500 something degrees. They have to be extremely, extremely hard and fired to an extremely high temperature in order to take the everyday abuse we give it. I mean, we, we give our toilets a lot of crap, so. I hope you guys understand the difference in between the zero scale and the positive scale, that being no zero scale. Let's kind of think of it as a positive and negative bar. If we're going in a straight line, over here is the negatives and over here is the positives. Over here is 0, 022 and it goes up with the zero in front of it. So it goes from 0, 022 to 21 to 20, 19, 18, 0, 017, 0, 016, 0, 015, and it keeps on going until it gets right in the middle at this bar called 00. zero. But do keep in mind the temperature is still going up. Just because it reached 00, zero and that's technically neutral right there in the middle of the bar, that doesn't mean that it's a less temperature. At this point, it's still going up. And at this point, it goes to cone 1, 2, 3, 4, and it keeps on going up until we reach the very basic of the Orton cone chart. You do have to remember that there's a massive difference in between the zero scale and the positive scale. Cone 06, which is where I usually do my bisque stuff, is completely different and a much less temperature than cone 6 is. So when you're going to a store and you want to get something that's cone 6, do not put the zero in front of it. Or vice versa, if you want something that's cone 06, don't get cone 6. They are different. Do you hear me? They are different. If you do not remember this, I will find you and I will I'm sorry, it's like a pet peeve of potters. For some reason, people can't seem to understand that putting a zero in front of things makes them not as hot as putting no zero in front of things. It's weird. The Orton cone chart starts way up here at the top left at 0 022. And starting at 0 022, this is what is considered very, very low fire. You can think of it as super low fire. And usually we don't deal with these cones, but let's just talk about them for a second. Super low fire is anywhere from 0 022 to 0 013. It starts at around 1112 degrees Fahrenheit and it goes to 1566 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually this is where a lot of luster glazes are done. So whenever you see one of my videos, where I'm doing gold luster, this is about where I do it. I do it at 018, and that's in between these two points. Then you have the low fire scale. The low fire scale starts at 012, and that's around 1623 degrees Fahrenheit, and it goes all the way up to 02. 02 is somewhere around 2048 degrees Fahrenheit. And for a long time, a lot of potters did their ceramic artwork in this firing range. And that's simply because historically, we didn't have the technology available to get to a higher fire. But now we have a bunch of electricity and fire everywhere, so we're good. A lot of people who do low fire stay in this area right here. You can get really good stable colors in this area, and you can get really good mason stains to come out as well. And the low fire temperature is where a lot of things are bisque. Usually people put their bisque in between cone 04 and 06. So that could be anywhere between cone 04, 05, and 06. And that is the usual. And I say usual because there's going to be one guy in the comments below, oh, I don't do my bisque at cone 06. The key component for low fire is that the glaze isn't erratic yet. It doesn't really need to go to a higher fire, so it doesn't really melt anywhere. It stays nice and solid where it is. When you paint on low fire stuff, it usually stays where it is, unless you're layering 1500 layers on there. You see this right here? This right here is just greenware. This right here is nothing. I just threw this, and it's dry. You hear that? 
This hasn't even gone inside the kiln yet. But once I put it in the kiln, at cone 0406, all the water is going to be drained out of it and it's going to have open pores. And these open pores are going to allow my glaze to be soaked into the body of my clay. And it goes from this to something like this. This is a lot harder. It's a lot stronger, but more importantly, all the pores are open so that the water and the clay and the glaze minerals can get into this body right here. And this right here is called bisque. This usually happens in between cone 04 and 06. To put it in really simple terms, all we're doing is we're putting this in the kiln once to get all the water out of it so that we can put more water but with nice shiny colors in it later on. That's all bisque really is without getting too technical. Then we have the lower mid-range of fire. This here is from cone 01, which is around 2,079 degrees Fahrenheit, to cone 3, which is 2,134 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not going to lie to you guys, nobody really uses this range of glazes. I, I mean, I, I would like to tell you some information about it, but it's so overlooked that no, like I don't have any info on it because nobody uses it. And then we have the mid-fire range stuff. This is anywhere from cone 4, which is around 2,167 degrees, to cone 7, which is 2,264 degrees, both Fahrenheit. Now this is where I do a lot of my pottery, and a skilled eye can really tell the difference in between something that is mid-fire and something that's high-fire. After cone 7, it gets into the high-fire range, but this right here is pretty much just cone 6. This is one of the most commonly used type of cones simply because a lot of electric kilns go to cone 6, and that's considered the mid-range, is anywhere in between cone 4 to cone 7, and cone 6 is pretty easy to get to if you have enough electricity. And then we have the high fire stuff. This is anywhere from cone 8, which can go to 2,300 degrees, somewhere around there, anywhere to cone 14, which is 2,530 degrees. This is extremely high fire. This on my left hand side is a little teacup that I made. It's cone 5-6, and it's made in an electric kiln. And this over here is cone 10, made in reduction. I made it about two years ago, and uh, I just kind of use it to hold all my crap, actually. Some potters are so experienced that they can very easily tell the difference in between something that's oxidation and something that's reduction. And I've met some people who can even tell the difference in between cone 5-6 and cone 10. It takes a really skilled eye, but sooner or later you'll get there. You see this right here? This thing right here is formulated for cone 06. That means once it reaches 1828 degrees, it's going to start melting and bending because that's essentially its melting point. Sooner or later, if you let that keep melting, it's going to turn into one of these. This is the exact same cone, except for this went through its process, and now it looks like your ex-boyfriend. Now each and every one of these cones is made of a very specific type of chemical and material. And each and every material has a melting point. And that melting point correlates to a certain number. And the number on this tells you exactly what temperature this is going to start to melt at. For example, the cones inside of this box are at cone 06. So these are going to start melting around 1828 degrees. But these over here are cone 6, not cone 06 cone 6, and these are going to start melting around 2,232 degrees. The reason that these temperatures are important is because each and every different type of potter uses a different scale. For example, I use stuff at cone 5 and cone 6. If you're in school, it's a pretty good chance that you're using stuff at cone 10. So your temperature, your glazes, and your clays are formulated to melt and fuse to each other at different temperatures than mine are. And this is really, really important inside the ceramic world. These cones are extremely important, especially for manual kilns, because these things will turn off your kiln at a certain temperature, and that temperature needs to correlate with your clay and or glaze bodies. Because if you let them go over temperature or over mature, they will start to run or you won't get the desired effect. You do not want to see what happens when you put cone 6 clay inside of a cone 10 kiln. You do not. You know what, actually, I'm just going to give you a picture right here just in case you really wanted to know. Did you see that? That's going to happen to your potter if you don't follow these rules. Because everything in the world technically has a melting point. For example, steel beams burn at 2,750 degrees. It's kind of like evaporation, except for solid objects. Kind of like how jet fuel burns at 1,500 degrees. And you have to remember that each and everything on the planet technically has an evaporation or a melting point. If I put enough heat on anything, it's either going to evaporate into the air or it's going to melt. And that's mostly what you have to remember. These numbers correlate to a specific temperature. And this temperature is either the melting point or the maturity point of your clay and or glazes. So let's go through the entire process really quick. This right here was thrown a couple days ago. It's dry now though. 
and at this stage, this is considered greenware. Greenware means that it hasn't even been put inside the kiln yet, it's just regular old room temperature dry. There's nothing to this, and if you try and crush it in your hands, it's probably extremely easy to break. Then you're going to put it in the kiln at cone 0, 06, 0, 05, or 0, 04, and that's considered the bisque scale. After it comes out of the kiln one time, this is now considered bisque. It's a lot harder now, but more importantly, the pores are open. It's a lot more dry and all the water has been taken out of it so that it can accept glaze later on. Now you can handle it freely without really worrying about breaking it too much and you can put glaze on it and it'll stick to the body. Because now that the pores are open, the glaze can freely be accepted into the clay body. Once you put glaze on it, it's going to look a little bit like this. And once you make sure the bottom is nice and clean, you can then put it back inside the kiln at whatever cone your teacher or you want to put it back into. So for example, I put mine in at cone 6. Once I put it back inside the kiln at cone 6, it'll come out nice and shiny. Get, get out of here, I don't love you anymore because I have this now. And the very last time it comes out of the kiln, it'll come out these very nice colors. Especially if you took really good care of it. And this is how you make the arte. And usually different potters stick to different things. For example, I usually work at the cone 5-6 oxidation scale. So a lot of my stuff looks really shiny and bright and exuberant like this. But a long time ago, I used to stick to the cone 10 reduction scale. And all my stuff was a lot less controllable and it looked a lot like this. But it still came out these very natural beautiful colors. Well thank you guys so much for joining me. I really hope that helps some of you guys better understand the cones and the scales and the different temperatures that each and every one of them correlate to. Because I get this question a lot. At least once a week I get people asking me what the process is, or what cone correlates to what temperature, or what the definition of a cone is. And I get a lot of questions and I thought this video would help some of you guys out. So thank you guys very much for joining me. If you want to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below. My Instagram, my Facebook, if you want to treat your beautiful, beautiful eyes. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Hey girl, you want to go on a date? No! I'm Cone 06. I'm way too hot for you. But I'm not. I'm Cone 06. Oh, you're so hot.